the world is anticipating GPT-5 and how it might shake the world up again. GPT-5, 6, and 7, I think will continue in future years on, a, on this trajectory of really increasing the utility they can provide. And this is like a, a big new exciting thing to have in the world. Recently, Sam Altman said that GPT-5 wasn't in training, but improvements are always being made to GPT-4. I mean, there are plugins and it can browse the internet now for crying out loud. And in theory, any new trick added to GPT-4 is one step closer to GPT-5. GPT-4.5 is almost sure to come out between this year and next. It'll include the multimodal ability to analyze images and text that were teased with GPT-4's release. I've done a video on what we could expect from GPT-5, but on this episode of AI Focus, we're going to look at four more things that we can expect from GPT-5. And stay till the end to see when we can expect the model that will further change the world. The first feature we can expect from GPT-5 is trust. GPT-4 scored 40% higher than GPT-3.5 in internal factual evaluations. Because of this, GPT-4 is 82% less likely to produce disallowed or inaccurate content. It's expected that GPT-5 would reduce hallucination to less than 10% in GPT-5, which would make LLM models almost completely trustworthy. Tests are cool, but the thing Sam Altman is most interested in when it comes to GPT-5 are the emergent capabilities. We can predict how it'll score on some tests we're really interested in, which gets to the latter part of your question, is can we predict the sort of the qualitative new things, just the new capabilities that didn't exist at all in GPT-4 that do exist in future versions like GPT-5? That seems important to figure out. But right now we can say, you know, here's how we predict it'll do on this eval or this metric. The next feature is compute efficiency. GPT-4 is expensive to run at 3 cents per token. Compare this to the 0.002 cents per token cost that GPT-3.5 had, and you'll quickly see the difference. GPT-4 costs this much because it's trained on a huge 1 trillion parameter dataset which requires costly infrastructure. Google's Palm 2 model, however, is only trained on 340 billion parameters while boasting quick performance. It's highly capable at a wide range of tasks and easy to deploy. We are announcing over 25 products and features powered by Palm 2 today. Palm 2 models deliver excellent foundational capabilities across a wide range of sizes. Google has come out and said that bigger isn't always better, and that research creativity is the key to building great models. They have even fine-tuned their model themselves for various needs, like the MedPalm 2 for doctors. Unlike previous versions, MedPalm 2 was able to score 85% on the USMLE medical licensing exam. Yeah, this is immensely exciting because people have been working on medical question answering for over three decades. And finally, we are at a stage where we can say with confidence that AI systems can now at least answer USMLE questions as good as experts. So the way we started with MedPalm 2 was really to take Palm 2, which is Google's most advanced language model, and then adapt it to the medical domain. To train the MedPalm 2 model, we worked with a panel of clinicians across the US, the UK, and India. We took a representative set of answers from this panel of clinicians and then tuned the model to produce answers that look more like those answers. And from there, we used this panel of clinicians and their judgments to kind of evaluate whether these models were performing better across a set of human values, including things like low likelihood of medical harm, aligned with scientific consensus, precision, and a lack of bias. If OpenAI hopes to compete with Google's Palm 2 or their secret weapon, Gemini, they better find a way to reduce the size of GPT while retaining its output quality. Also, we should expect a better inference time, or the time it takes a deep learning model to make a prediction on new data. The more features and plugins they add on to GPT-4, the more important compute efficiency becomes. Developers are already complaining that GPT-4 API calls frequently stop responding, forcing them to use GPT-3.5. A huge amount of OpenAI's revenue comes from businesses, so it's got to be cheaper, smaller, and faster. Next, we can expect GPT-5 to be multi-sensory. GPT-4, when it's all said and done, will only be able to deal in text and images, but GPT-5 may take a true leap in multimodal capabilities. Tools for analyzing audio, video, depth data, and temperature could all possibly be added to the model. Soon, I'll do a video on Meta's ImageBind, the open source model that combines data from six different modalities, which Meta says can be used to create very immersive content for VR. 
I don't know if OpenAI can compete with that yet, but they do have some pretty impressive foundational models for vision analysis and image generation, like Clip and Dali respectively. So I guess that's a start. Text models could in theory achieve AGI one day, but multimodal capabilities will arguably be the fastest link to AGI, however. I'm very excited to see what happens when we can really do video. There's a lot of video content in the world. There's a lot of things that are, I think, much easier to learn with video than text. There's a huge debate in the field about whether a language model can get all the way to AGI. Can you represent everything that you need to know in language? Is language sufficient or do you have to have video? I personally think it's a dumb question because it probably is possible, but the fastest way to get there, the easiest way to get there will be to have these other representations like video in these models as well. The last feature is long-term memory. GPT-4's maximum token length is 32,000 tokens, which was impressive a couple months ago. Now we have models like StoryWriter that can output 65,000 tokens and Anthropic's Claude that increased its token window to 100,000 tokens. It should be expected that GPT-5 will bring a longer context length. Not only would you be able to load books and documents into your context window, but this gives you the potential to have AI friends that can remember you for years if you're that lonely and miserable. But with all that said and done, will we see GPT-5 anytime soon? For one, in a recent interview, Sam Altman has said that OpenAI is extremely GPU limited. This means plans to reach that long context length and fine-tuning for specific datasets will be delayed. This shortage is what's caused that API problem discussed earlier. OpenAI is offering more dependable and faster API access, but it'll cost you $100,000. Then there's the fact that Altman wants to continue making the cost of intelligence as cheap as possible, using the company's resources to further optimize GPT-4 instead of focusing on GPT-5. In addition, the company hopes to increase the token window to 1 million tokens, obliterating the competition. And I really do think we'll look back at this like we were all living through one of the most important periods of human discovery. I think this will be that big of a deal. Who knows when we'll see GPT-5, but it won't be this year and likely may not be next year either. But the improvements made to GPT-4 are just as important to look forward to. There are some serious issues that need to be fixed and important things like multimodal capability that we haven't seen from GPT-4 yet. However, companies aren't sleeping and OpenAI better be ready to compete with Google's Gemini. That's gonna be an absolute monster. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Click that video on the screen to watch something you haven't seen. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.